Welcome to Oracle Enterprise Manager video training series. In this video, we will talk about advanced threshold settings, which is one of the framework features in Enterprise Manager Striking C. My name is Yutaka Takatsu. I am one of the product managers in Enterprise Manager product management team. But what is advanced threshold? Why did we introduce this feature? So let me quickly talk about this in high level before going into the details. The problem with the traditional monitoring is that the metric threshold, either critical or warning, is static. It is a single fixed value per metric. So it does not handle the workload variation that can have in different time very well. So if you have a system that has different workload in different time, you may miss a spike in the weekend right here. Or you may want to run batch jobs in the weekend to better utilize your resources. In that case, you may get false alerts from them. So what you need is an ability to set different threshold based on time that runs different workloads. And the solution is to use advanced thresholds. Basically, the idea here is that instead of having a fixed thresholds, it allows you to specify different threshold values for different times to go with your workload patterns, such as day versus night or weekdays versus weekends. And the typical use case for this feature is that when you have a system that runs OLTP in the daytime, but runs batch jobs in the evening, and you want to monitor the performance. In this case, you may want to set lower threshold at the daytime and higher threshold in the evening. Another use case is that your system or application may have fewer activities during the weekend. In this case, you can set lower threshold during the weekend and higher in the weekdays. Either case, the point is that you can set two or more different thresholds for a single metric based on time also depends on the expected workload running at the time. So this really is the basis of the feature. We have two threshold options time-based static threshold and adaptive threshold, which is a self-adjusting option. So starting from the left side of the screen, we have time-based static thresholds. This option allows you to manually set multiple different threshold values per single metric based on time, such as day and night or weekday and weekends, also with combination with them or even with multiple thresholds. And this will resolve the problem of workload variation in different time. And this is what we just saw in the previous slide. On top of that, at the right-hand side of the screen, another option we have is adaptive, which is a self-adjusting option. And please note that the time-based setting, which we just discussed in the left side of the screen, is common in both options. Adaptive just has auto-computing feature on top of that. So on top of what time-based option can do, it provides an ability to dynamically set thresholds based on statistical target performance. So using this option, the thresholds are automatically computed by Enterprise Manager based on the context of prior observations of the specific metric in the specific system. Basically, it looks up the historical performance data that is captured during the baseline period and it comes up with an auto-computed threshold based on the criteria you configured. And the values are periodically recomputed and dynamically reapplied to go with your target workload trend, which may change over time. So this is keep moving and keeps changing. And one of the common use cases of adaptive threshold is that when you are using a monitoring template to push out metric settings to multiple targets, in the standard settings, when you create a monitoring template, a metric threshold is a fixed value, and that will be pushed out to all of your targets. This means all of your targets are going to have the same threshold value. It does not consider the workload variation among those targets, which could be different. The adaptive threshold resolves this problem of workload variation in different targets. For example, you may have a production host that you want to keep the CPU low. You may also have a non-production host, which you run load test every evening. So you may be okay to have a higher CPU in the system. 
and you are applying a monitoring template to those two targets. In this case, using adaptive thresholds, each target host will have a different threshold automatically computed and applied based on the workload in the each host. So in this example, host A, which is a production host, may have a lower threshold, and host B, which is a non-production host, may have a higher threshold. Other use cases are more to do with our legacy options, which are succeeded from the time when this was a database feature. So using this option, you can detect anomalies or abnormal behaviors in the workload that are caused by poor system performance. Or you can use it to raise an alert when a metric approaches or exceeds the peak or average workload. We will talk about these use cases more in the later slides. So these are the two threshold options. But in fact, most of the workload variation use cases, such as OLTP versus batch use case, can be resolved by the time-based option. So our recommendation is to start with a time-based, unless you are already familiar with the adaptive option, and move on to adaptive only when needed. Here, let me provide a brief history of advanced threshold settings. This feature was originally the database adaptive thresholds, which was first introduced in Oracle Database 10G. This later became a part of Enterprise Manager. However, its capability was very limited. It only worked against selected database metrics. And the sampling was done at the database server level, not at the agent level. So apparently, the only supported target type was the database. It also required for users to prepare for AWR baselines prior to configuring the threshold, so it had a technical requirement here as well. In Enterprise Manager 12.1.0.4, the feature evolved into advanced threshold settings, and as we already covered, we introduced two threshold options, time-based static and adaptive. And this was further enhanced in 13C with new options and capabilities. So in the new settings, the sampling is now done at agent level instead of the server level, which means now this is open to all targets, not just the database metrics. We also have a new baseline, so AWR baseline is no longer required. Basically, this is the new way versus the old way we used to have. In Enterprise Manager 13C, actually you can still see the server advanced threshold settings, which is the old settings, if you dig into the menu. But this exists only from the backward compatibility reasons. No further enhancement can be expected from the development, so it is recommended to use the new settings, advanced threshold, not the old one. So let's take a closer look at the adaptive threshold option. To recap, what it does, it computes threshold values based on the statistical performance information and all adjust to the target workload. There are three steps to configure. First, you need to specify the threshold change frequency. And this is something that we have already covered. You can select different thresholds based on time, such as day and night or weekdays and weekends. And this is the same setting that we have in common with a time-based static option. Then you can specify how much data you want to collect for the baseline. This can be specified by a trading time period or most recent time period from 7 days to 28 days. So basically, this is 1 week to 4 weeks max. Once the time-based settings are set, you can select the metrics and register them and configure threshold settings for each of those metrics. And there are three types of threshold settings within adaptive thresholds. First option is the significance level. This option can be used when you want to detect abnormal behaviors in your metric performance. And there are other options, percentage of max and percentage of average. These options can be used when you want to have an alert when a target workload is approaching or exceeded its peak or average workload. And we will see more details of each of these options in the next few slides. So the first threshold option we have is significance level. And again, this option can be used when you want to know when a target deviates from its normal behavior. Basically, it detects spikes from your metric performance. And the assumption here is that when this happens, 
you know that was caused by other reasons in your system somewhere. So the metric itself is not the culprit. And because of that, the focus of the alerting for this option is how unusual rather than how much. And this option is good for a metric that is statistically stable at the normal time of operations, but shows high values when the system is performing poorly. So for example, response time metric in database target type is traditionally a good candidate for this setting. And the threshold is based on percentiles over the baseline period. So for example, a warning threshold can be set to 95 percentile. What this means is that the threshold is set where 5% of the baseline values fall outside of this value, and any current value which exceeds this value triggers an alert. So this can be a little tricky, but generally speaking, the higher the significance level, the fewer alerts you may get. In other words, the higher the percentile, the more conservative it becomes. And please note that this option only works well with a statistically stable metrics. It won't work well with the metrics that are not stable. The next option we have is percent of maximum thresholds. Unlike the significance level threshold setting, here we are not looking for statistically unusual values, but rather looking for the values that are approaching or exceeded the peak workload, which was observed over the baseline period. This threshold setting allows you to set metric thresholds relative to the trimmed max value from the baseline. And please note that this is not simply taking the greatest value from the period. That 99th percentile is used to exclude certain spikes, and that is why we say this is a trimmed max value. Therefore, when you set the threshold level to 100%, that is the 99th percentile value measured over the baseline. And this could be lower than the actual greatest value that was measured during the period. For example, you can set the critical threshold level to 150%. And let's say the trimmed max value from the baseline was 1000. So again, this is not the greatest value. It is the 99th percentile value that excludes 1% of values from the period. So there could be few spikes with higher values that went off during the period, but those values are not counted in. So the calculation here is going to be 1000, which is a trimmed max value, multiplies 150% equals to 1500. So in this case, the alert will be triggered when the value exceeds 1500. And lastly, we have percent of average threshold option. And this is new in 13C. It is similar to the percentage of maximum, but in this option, the threshold can be set related to the average value that was measured over the baseline period. And this, in fact, is the only option in adaptive threshold that is focused on enterprise manager use cases. So unlike the previous two options, which were defined when the feature was a part of a database, this option was introduced by enterprise manager team for enterprise manager users. Therefore, this option is aimed to cover more generic enterprise manager customer use cases rather than focusing on specific purposes like the other two options. So again, in this option, the threshold is computed relative to the average of the baseline. So if you set the threshold level parameter 100%, that equals to the average value. For example, if the threshold level is set to 150%, and if the average value from the baseline is 1000, that is 1000 multiplies 150% equals to 1500. So the alert is triggered when the value exceeds 1500. And the setting that could make sense to many metrics Maybe to set 150% for critical and 120% for warning. So these are the three threshold settings in adaptive threshold. However, we are seeing these adaptive options a little tricky to many users, especially at the beginning. So our recommendation is not to look into the threshold option details at the beginning, unless you are already familiar with them, but to start from one of the settings we already have with. Any option is fine, but probably the percent of average is a good one to start with because it is more generic and easier. Then you can use analyze threshold page that provides a graphical user interface to verify the threshold. And here's a screenshot of the analyze threshold page. Once you configure the advanced threshold for a metric, either time-based or adaptive, you can use this page to determine the validity of the threshold that is configured.
In this example, I created an adaptive threshold for a host metric CPU utilization. For the threshold option, I use a significance level. And in the chart, pink line indicates a critical threshold. And as you can see, it is not a straight line. It goes up and down. This is because the change frequency is set by day and night. So the higher threshold is set to the daytime and lower threshold is set to the evenings. And then I can see spikes goes off almost every morning. And if I want to cover them in a threshold, one thing I can do is to change the threshold settings to something else. For example, percentage of maximum. I can change the parameters if I wanted to, then click the preview button. And you see the chart is updated. This is how it would look like if you apply the change. Actual change has not done yet until you press the save button. So you can try out other options, and if you like the change you made, you can save that in this window and then apply to the metric right away. So this was the Analyze Threshold feature. It essentially provides an easier option to configure your adaptive threshold settings. So that was the overview of Advanced Threshold Management. For more information, we have online documentation available from the URL showing in this screen. It has more explanation on each threshold options and has use cases too, so please take a look at if you want to know more about this feature. This is the end of recording of Adaptive Threshold Management presentation. Thank you for listening.